1941 and Yugoslavia has come under the control of the Axis powers. In Croatia, they've installed a puppet regime led by the dreaded Ustasha. The Ustasha would go on to commit crimes as evil as the Nazis themselves and would be full, willing participants in committing the Holocaust. The Jews of Croatia would be rounded up en masse and sent away to concentration camps from where they would likely never return. There were, though, Croatians willing to help their fellow man. One such person, Jarko Dolinar, a table tennis champion, along with his brother Boris, would go on to help save the lives of over 360 people. Jarko Dolinar was born in July 1920 in Kobrovnica, which is in present-day Croatia, and at the time was part of the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Jarko's father, Jakub, was a judge, and the Dolinar family moved several times following his career. Eventually, though, they would settle in Zagreb, the capital of Croatia. Jarko's mother, Francisca, came from a family of sports people, and Jarko would follow in this tradition, playing football, tennis, handball, and most importantly, table tennis. However, at the age of 14, Jarko broke his leg, after which he decided to focus solely on table tennis. In the family home, on a small table, Jarko and his brother Boris would play table tennis for hours, with Jarko using a bat without a handle. From this, Jarko would develop a unique penholder grip he would use throughout his career. Boris would become an accomplished table tennis player in his own right. In 1936, when Jarko was about 15 or 16, he began competing in regional and national tournaments. But it was in 1939 that he really established himself as one of Yugoslavia's top players. In 1939, he became Yugoslavian national champion. And later that year, he would compete at the World Table Tennis Championships held in Cairo. As part of the Yugoslavian men's team, he would win a silver medal. And in the singles event, he would pick up a bronze medal for himself. His success in Cairo would make him a well-known athlete within Croatia. If he'd inherited his sporting genes from his mother, perhaps his academic side came from his father. In 1938, Jacques enrolled at Zagreb University to study veterinary medicine. One day, he would become Professor Jaco Dolinar. But if 1939 represented a great year in his table tennis career, 1939 also represented the start of the Second World War. It would be a full 10 years before Jaco eventually graduates, and it would be 8 years before another table tennis world championship is held. Table tennis did actually continue through the war, and Jaco played some international matches in Hungary and even one match in Germany in 1940. Yugoslavia's position at the start of the war was precarious to say the least. Both the Axis and Allied powers wanted Yugoslavia to join their side. And within Yugoslavia, there was division about what to do, often divided along ethnic lines. Eventually though, in 1941, Axis forces led by Germany and Italy invaded, and they installed a puppet regime fronted by the Ustasha. The Ustasha, led by Ante Pavlic, were an ultra-nationalist, fascist organisation who sought out a racially pure Croatia. In attempting to achieve this, they would commit some of the worst war crimes of the Second World War. On their target list were the Roma, Serb and Jewish populations of Croatia. Out of the 39,000 Jews who lived in Croatia in 1941, 30,000 would perish. Jaco Dolinar was a proud Croatian, but he was also a humanist, so along with his brother Boris, he would do anything he could to help those in danger, particularly the Jews of Zagreb, many of which he counted as personal friends. Jaco's fame and influence would also allow him to get away with things that most others probably couldn't. A key part of the brothers' activities would be obtaining and producing false identity documents and travel permits. As Jaco was welcome everywhere across Zagreb, he was able to visit Ustasha headquarters and offices where he would steal blank documents. In the basement of the family home, Boris and Jaco set up a workshop 
where they went about forging whatever kind of document they needed. Boris was apparently a master of creating official looking seals. New Croatian names were given on identity documents to mask a person's Jewish identity. Or travel permits were produced to allow people to leave Croatia for safer havens. Jarko Dolinar had worked as a coach at many different table tennis clubs across Zagreb, including the Jewish sports club Maccabee. Many of the people that the Dolinar brothers helped were members of the Maccabee club, including Gerson Apfel. Gerson Apfel had been Jarko Dolinar's student at the Maccabee club, and when Jarko had heard that Gerson Apfel was due to be sent to the notorious Yadovno concentration camp, Jarko took Gerson into his home and hid him. The Dolinar brothers then prepared travel documents for Gerson to leave Croatia, ultimately saving his life. Amongst those at the Dolinar's help were fellow table tennis players, such as Gustav Pell. Gustav Pell had been one of Yugoslavia's best table tennis players before the war. With the help of the Dolinar brothers, he was able to link up with the partisan movement, who were then fighting against the fascist organisations. Unfortunately, Gustav Pell did lose his life in that battle. The brothers helped Susie Ferber, later known as Susie Jelinek, and her parents. The brothers hid the family in their home before travelling with them to the Italian-controlled part of Yugoslavia, where the situation for Jews was much safer. Susie Jelinek would go on to become a famous fashion designer. Another family that the Dolinar brothers helped was the Duich family. One member of that family was Judita, and in 1948, Jaco would marry Udita, and the couple would go on to have a daughter together. The Eustacia did eventually catch on to the brothers' activities, but fortunately, they were never arrested. It's likely Jaco's status as a well-known athlete protected the two. Their father, though, wasn't quite so lucky. He was arrested and removed from his position as a judge. All in all, it's believed that Jaco and Boris helped save the lives of over 360 people. In 1993, the State of Israel recognised the pair as Righteous Among Nations, a title given to non-Jews who risked their lives to save Jews during the Holocaust. Jaco Dolinar continued playing table tennis after the Second World War ended. He was part of the Yugoslavia team that won a bronze medal in the men's team event at the 1951 Vienna World Table Tennis Championships. He won a silver in 1953 in the mixed doubles, and then... In 1954, at the London World Table Tennis Championships, he finally got his hands on a gold World Championship medal, partnering with Willem Harangozo in the men's doubles. By the end of his career, Jaco Dolinar had won a total of eight World Championship medals. His last World Championships were in 1959. By the time his table tennis career had ended, Jaco was now Dr. Dolinar. Jaco's academic career was perhaps even more successful than his table tennis career. In 1963, Jaco moved to Basel, Switzerland. Here, he would earn two further doctorates and would eventually become Professor Dolinar. Jaco had a wide range of expertise, but had mostly moved on to human medicine rather than the veterinary medicine he'd studied back in Croatia. He continued to research and lecture and was very well respected amongst his students and the scientific community. He retired from academia after 26 years at the University of Basel. Jaco was a true polymath, as his expertise did not stop at veterinary and human medicine. He is reported as being able to speak 16 languages and had interests in archaeology, art and dentistry apparently. There are many, many other interesting aspects of Jaco Dolinar's life. For example, when he was a player, on the non-playing side of his table tennis bat, he had a skull and crossbones and would collect the autographs of his defeated opponents. They would of course oblige him because he was a much liked player on the scene. And this was just one of the many things that Jacques Dolinar liked to collect. He supposedly had the largest collection of autographs anywhere in the world, with over 75,000 signatures. He also had the birth certificate of Karl Marx. Make of that what you will. Any person who's written anything about their interactions with Jaco Dolinar says how funny and how friendly he was. So basically, in conclusion, Jaco Dolinar was not only a great of table tennis, he was a great of humanity. He died in 2003 at the age of 82.